No, so it's so difficult for you guys to create a table. <laughs> All right, so uh, now this one for the X, you just plug in the number in the denominator. And I didn't give you guys any fractions. So I don't want to scare you away, you know, like make you throw up or something, even though we need the fractions. But anyways, so we plug in negative three, we're going to get one third. We plug in negative two, we get negative one half. We plug in uh, negative one, we get negative one. Uh, this one's undefined. You can't divide by zero. Remember guys, each for each of these, we're just plugging that number into the X. We're just replacing it. So this would be one over negative three, which is the same as negative one third. Okay, now when we do the positive ones, it's pretty much the same thing, except now it's positive. So if we go ahead and look at our other table, uh, this one would do the same thing, except now we have to square the numbers. So if you go negative three squared, negative three times negative three, you're gonna get nine. But this time it's positive, the negative goes away because you know, two negatives multiply them together and make them positive. Oh, yes. And so then you get one fourth for this one, positive, and then you get positive one for that one, and this is still undefined. This is positive one, this is positive one fourth. Hey, it's the same as the other one, you're right. And then you get positive one over nine. All right, I know this is, this is hard for you guys. Okay, so now I go to graph this. <coughs> At, uh, let's see. This guy right here. Okay, I saw one of you guys make a double table, and I thought that was really cool, so I wanted to make a mention of it. Like, what you did is, like, you graphed the F values here and the G values right there. Good job. You know, to, that's an effective way to be lazy. So we have a, a positive one and negative one. Okay, uh, one one is right there. All right, right? When we plug in one, we get one. When we plug in two, we get one half, and so we get... Um, that point right there is for the y value. And then for three, we're gonna get one third. And then for four, if I did four, uh, it would be that close like that. And this is the line you would get, you guys would get, okay? Uh, well, not the line yet, okay? So let's uh, do our other points, okay? At negative two, negative three, and negative four. We didn't put a negative four. Yeah, but it's kind of the trend. You guys see what's happening right here? When we draw our lines, uh, we get this guy and this guy, okay? Uh, so. If you guys have that, you did a good job. You did not falter. You didn't like get scared away from plugging numbers into a, 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 a function. Um, so what I w really wanted to give you guys, you know, it's a desk problem though. It's kind of like a warm up thing. I wanted to give you guys a fraction, <laughs> but I know you guys would be scared of a fraction because if you plug a fraction of this, it's going to be one divided by a one half. But some of you guys are good. <laughs> guys, how many one halves are in a one? There's only two, right? That's, that's easy. So you guys just put two, right? You plug in one half, you get two. Uh, or you can think of it like this. You can say, uh, when you divide by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by a reciprocal. So you can go one times two over one, which is the same as two. So you get one times two, which is two. Oh, so I can put two right there. So if you're at one half, it jumps up to two. Now, what about one third? What would I get if I plugged in a one third? Oh, I get a three. You guys see the pattern with that one really fast. And so I put a three right here and go, bam, it goes up like that instantly. Because if you think about it, if you plug it in one fifth, what are you going to get? Five. If you plug it in one sixth, what are you going to get? Six. If you plug it in a seven, what are you going to get? Seven. So the, the graph goes up like that. And it makes no difference. If they were negative, it would just change them to negative. And so the other side is going to do the same thing. All right. So you guys see how the graph looks? Do we understand why it looks like that after looking at the table? I hope you do. Now let's look at the, the x squared on the when it's on the bottom, okay? So let's see here. Oh my God. Wait a second, wait a second. Look at that, they're all positive. They're up above the x-axis. Negative three, negative two, negative one, that all give you positive numbers. Oh. Okay, same thing over here. We plug in positive numbers, we get positive, we get the same thing. So I graph those points, booyah. Uh, but what if I plug in an, an, uh, a fraction? Ooh. <laughs> All right, what would you get? If you take one half and you square it, what's it going to be? One fourth. Wow, guys, don't yell all at once. It's like a little overwhelming for me, okay? It's, it's in the morning on a Monday. All right, so uh, I get one fourth on the denominator. I have one divided by one fourth. Guys, how many one fourths are in a one? There's four of them, right? You guys are so good. Or you guys can think of multiplying by the reciprocal, so it'd be one times four. I know, I know. Uh, what about one third? Do you guys know what that would be, get, get you? Can you do that in your head? What's one third times one third? One ninth. One times one is one. Three times three is nine. So you have one divided by 
Um, one third. Okay, so here's what we were talking about earlier. That equals one uh, divided by one fourth, which is the same as one times four. So this one's gonna be a four. So we put a dot way up there. <laughs> oh, dang. I put a dot way up there? Yeah, you put a dot way up there, okay? And then you do the same thing for the other side. And uh, that's what we get. Man, that's, that's kind of crazy. Now I'm gonna throw in some asymptotes here so you guys can see the asymptotes. Now our vertical asymptotes um, are related to excluded values, okay? Uh, so what's the excluded value for this function right here? Zero. It's zero. And so we have a vertical asymptote at zero. And the same thing goes for this guy. The excluded value is zero. You cannot plug in zero because then you would be dividing by zero. You cannot divide by zero. That's also why there's an undefined here and there's an undefined here. And so we have vertical asymptotes. Now there's another type of asymptote that will show up on rational graphs every now and then, and that's known as the horizontal asymptotes. Or I call them the hoary asymptotes. Okay, so we have hoary asymptotes, we have verti asymptotes. Uh, the difference between a vertical and a horizontal, so this is vertical and this one's horizontal, is that the graphs will never go through a vertical asymptote. But every now and then a graph will go through a hoary asymptote, okay? Uh, but they do help you guys see where the graph trends toward, okay? Because the graphs are always attracted to asymptotes, okay? So the function will always get closer and closer to the asymptote, but it'll never touch the asymptote, unless you're a hoary asymptote. Every now and then, it'll touch it once, okay? So the functions go towards the asymptotes. It helps you guys see their behavior. Anyways... I need you guys to know what this guy and what this guy look like. That's why I took the time to have you guys do these tables.